Look, I'm going to make this simple for you. The more time that you give yourself to trade, the greater the probability of success. All that trading really is, is pattern recognition, entry execution, mixed with a little patience. Pretty simple, right? Well, let me show you just how simple trading really is. Be sure to stick around to the end because no matter how easy trading should be, it's not going to be if you don't have certain things in order. Now, without further ado, let's get into how to swing trade. So real quickly, before we begin charting, I want to stress the importance of time frame and finding which ones work for you. So when it comes to swing trading, for me, uh, I find the four hour, the weekly, and the monthly to be good time frames. We usually find much larger moves on larger time frames, but they're also going to require more patience for the setup. So over time, kind of play with the different time frames, see what works for you. But I want to show you. You can see right here on this lower time frame, you can see a lot more consolidation. So right here, this is from about July 12th to about July 24th. If we look at this on a weekly chart. It's literally about three candles, whereas on the monthly charts, it's not even, it's just a little wick right here. So I want you to just see the significance and the difference before we really get in and start charting. All right, so now the first thing that we're gonna take a look at in charting is just gonna be supply and demand. So looking at it, the market, does not move in a straight line. So it's always either making higher highs and higher lows, which this is an uptrend, making lower lows and lower highs, which is a downtrend. And then sometimes it just sits and consolidates, makes same highs and same lows. And whenever this happens, it leaves behind zones that cause these movements. So. Taking a quick look at it right here, if you look at the uptrend, it's gonna be kinda of like this. This right here, it comes in and it kinda of just barely taps in. This is a demand zone that is the move that initiates the break of this high right here. And then as this happens right here, this zone is gonna leave another demand zone which leads to the break of this high. Similarly over here, this is a supply zone which pushes the price down causing the break of this low right here. And then over here, it's just, this is just trading in a range so no supply or demand to be found because there are no new highs or lows. So looking at the chart, looking for highs and lows and market structure, you can see that uh, right here, the highest high is kind of over here. And the last candle that leads to the break of this high over here is this one right here. So this right here is a demand zone. So that's how you find a demand zone. And then looking for a supply zone, whenever you start a downtrend, which it looks like we kind of started over here. Whenever you start a downtrend, which it looks like uh, we kind of got a change of trend once we broke below this right here. The last bullish candle is going to be supply zone. And as you can see, we kind of came back or we came up here, sold off, came down to 25. And now we're kind of testing this area again to see if we're going to make new highs. That's a quick lesson on supply and demand. That's just one thing we're going to mark up the charts with. Uh, now we're going to move on to trend lines. All right, so looking at it, in order to draw a trend line, all you need to do is be able to get about two points on a chart. So if we look at this right here, you can see uh, I'm gonna take the trend line tool. I'm gonna draw. And we can see that, we can see that right here, I got one, two, three touches, and then we got a break of the trend and then with the break of this trend we sold off and came down here to this level of support this trend line is serving as a level of support which holds the stock price up trend lines can also be resistance which serve as kind of like a roof 
which holds the stock price down. So looking at it, this is what a trend line looks like. If you're able to recognize when you're in a trend line, it's trading becomes pretty easy. If you sell at the top of a trend line and buy at the bottom, say we come up here to 26.39, we sell at the top and go right down to the next touch. The next touch, that is an 11% return. And then say we buy in at this touch over here and sell out at the next touch. The next touch is all the way up here, which is a 20% return. Now say we take that and kind of try to sell off until the next touch is not as great of a return to the downside, but this is an ascending channel. So maybe if you see the channel is going up, you only want to buy to the upside. And then when you get the break of it to the downside, maybe that's when you start trying to sell from the trend line. And then last but not least, the last element that we have, aside from trend lines and supply and demand, we also have support and resistance. So whenever you have areas where the stock trades sideways, or comes and touches a lot and rejects, those are gonna be levels of support or resistance. So looking at it, we have a level, kind of a area of support right here. If you look at it, it's kind of gonna be a range. It may not, like depending on if you're on a lower time frame, it's not gonna be as pretty. But I'm say right here at this $20.70 range, I would say this is a good area of support. And then kind of up here, if you take a look, we have it over here, over here as well. This 2730 area is going to be a good level of resistance. And then while you're above it, when you go above resistance, it becomes support. And whenever you go below support, it becomes resistance. So that's how you draw a trend line. That's how you draw a support and resistance. Now we're going to take a look at all this, how it all works together and talk about how to actually take a trade from this all right so now we're going to be doing the same thing but we're going to be doing it on the weekly chart just because it's like yeah you can do this this is on the four hour chart so essentially if you take support and resistance and draw it on the different time frames you can also see there's an area right here that can serve as support or resistance you see it comes up here, has a little bit of trouble getting over. Then we come back below. You can kind of use support and resistance as levels for the trade along with trend lines. So when you're taking trades, you could take from this is support here from this trend line and also from this line of support and resistance. This takes you all the way up here and it's like, oh, this is an old this is an old key level from back here. And we had all these touches over here. So it was like, oh, maybe I'll take profits here. Or maybe, oh, we got above this. We're probably going to the next area in the trend line. All trading is, is pattern recognition. The sooner that you're able to recognize a pattern and the sooner you're able to see that there is a pattern, the sooner you're able to take advantage of it. So taking a look at it, over here, you can see we have this supply zone that we drew actually. Uh, we came up here, sold off once, and once again, we're pretty close to this trend line actually. So those are kind of, this is what would be known as confluence. You have two kind of factors that work together that would tell you, hey, this is probably going to sell off in this area. Looking at this, if we were looking at a lower time frame. Uh, you can see right here, we came back up to supply, sold off. Next thing we'll want to do right here where it's at is see how it responds to this area of support, this little support level. And then you can kind of see a little trend line right here as well. So we'll kind of see how that plays out, um, see how it holds up support. Here, let's actually go down to a lower time frame. So if we were trying to draw a trend line for now it looks like there could be one right here but going back up to the four hour this is all we really have so 
not too much strength at the moment. This is how it can look whenever you're charting. Usually it's going to be better for your mind to have less things going on. So me, I typically just use supply, demand, support and resistance and trend lines. And then once something's not relevant like this line up here, I clear it off the chart and kind of go on to the next. Now, real quick, I want to do this taking a look at another chart on the weekly chart. Uh, talk about where to enter the trade, where to set stop losses and take profits. All right, so here we are looking at the SPY on the weekly chart. And yeah, I'm going to start off by drawing what I see. I see a demand zone here. I would honestly say it's less relevant when you're far away. I see a demand zone here. I see a demand zone right here. All right, so this is what I see on the SPY. And then I think I see a trend. So if we take a look um, right here, we got two points on the line. Third time it kind of broke through. Notice when we get the breakthrough, it went from 545. And then this candle right here was confirmation down here at 530 that we have broken the trend and are now kind of in the downtrend. We'll see how this candle ends up closing. If we look at this demand zone, uh, we did open this candle down at about 510. We did make our way back up to about 530. And now it looks like we may be making our way down to the next level. So the next thing I see here it's actually a level of support right here in this kind of 590 or 495 area. You can see we had, we spent a little, like a few candles over here where this, it was holding up. We came back and we kind of bounced off over here. So I see this as a level of support. So yeah, that's the next thing I'll kind of watch out for. And now looking at it, this level right here, this 523.52 or this 524 area this looks like a level of resistance it looks like a level that there's going to be trouble because if we look at it you can see over here looks like there's some trouble uh, you can see like it had trouble getting above and it sold off there and then over here uh, the resistance became kind of support because it went up and then came back down to the same area and now it's serving as resistance again. Now that I have this, uh, let's say I notice this and we came back up here and I noticed, hey, we close below this. If I was gonna take a trade from this, it's like, okay, it looks like we're holding below 24. Maybe I come in, I put my stop over here at this next level. Uh, this kind of 532 area looks like a level of resistance, like another one. If you look at it right here, it had a little bit of trouble getting above this for a little bit. So now say I set my stop loss kind of in that area. And then I kind of target this area right here. It's a 3.18 risk to reward ratio, which means I can take this trade three times, uh, get it wrong twice, get it right once and still make profit off the trade. So looking at this, yeah, I would enter this trade right here at about 523, 524. Look for it to come down, test this low around 494. And then, yeah, I have my stop loss up here at about 532.50. Things to consider while you are riding a trade to the downside. The further in profit you get, uh, you can set your profit as you go. So as you make these movements, there are different levels. You can see this like uh, you see there's wicks at this level right here, this 517. So as we get below this, this would be a level that, hey, maybe I'll move my stop up here to 523.50 once we hold below this. And then there's another one kind of right here at this 513 area. It's like if we get below that, maybe I move my stop to about this 517 or 518 area. And then the next area looks like it's about... Uh, maybe this 508 area, then move it here. 
as you're in the trade, as you're up more, you want to move your stop loss. Maybe even it's like your risk ends up looking something like this and you just completely just move your trade to kind of emulate it. After a certain point, you're not really risking anything because you're so deep in profit, there is nowhere to lose. All that seems simple enough, right? There's still one thing that can get in the way of all that. You. If things aren't right with you, if, if you're not taking care of things in your life, if you're not taking care of your health, if you have a lot of stuff going on, like say a big move or say you just got in a big fight, uh, if there are things going on in your life, trust me, I know from experience, it pours over into your life. If you need the income from trading, it's not going to work out so well for you. Make sure you have some other form of income to take care of everything so that you're not as stressed, so that you don't need to dip into your trading funds before the trade is over. If you haven't already taken advantage of it, be sure to check out the Moomoo Moo referral link down below in the description. Right now, when you sign up using my link, they are offering anywhere from eight to 20 free stocks. Uh, this is a deal you won't get from anyone else's referral link. So be sure to check that out down below in the description when you open an account and make a deposit using the link down below in the description. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, be sure to smash the like button. If for some reason you're new here and haven't already, be sure to subscribe. And last, but certainly not least, Matthew Manuel signing off, and I want to change your life.